So we have created this method, but where we should be using it? For using this method, I will create a qubit because I will use qubit to manage the state of this application. For doing this, I will add block provider to my application. So as you see, this block provider is ready and we can use qubit to manage our state. We can close this login data source. Inside of lib folder, we can create qubits folder. Inside of this qubits folder, we can use this qubit new qubit option, which is going to generate all the codes that is necessary for this qubit. And here we can use the login as a name of the qubit automatically files that we need will be created. That auto-generate is possible for me because I installed blog extension. Now we can close this login screen and start creating the logic for logging qubit. Here inside of login state, we can start creating our state. We are not going to be using several states. We will need just the one state, which is going to be login state. That's why I will delete this abstract class and I will have just the one login state. And here, as a name of this class, I will use login state. I don't need to extend anything because I deleted abstract class. This login state class is responsible for getting the data which we need inside of login screen. For example, we can create final boolean is loading property. So that is going to be responsible for letting the screen know that our data is loading currently. If the value of this is loading is true, that means data is still loading. We need to wait a little bit. Then as a second one, I will define another bool, which is gonna be responsible for the errors. Here I will say has error. And if has error is true, which means there is an error and we will know it from the login screen. As a third one, we can create another Boolean, which is going to be has data. So that is necessary because we have to know if we can log in. And if we can log in, we're gonna have data. Here inside of login successful, we are getting token, which means we successfully log into our application. As a last property of this login screen, I will be using a string, which is gonna give me errors. And as I told you, inside of login data source, inside of exception, we are passing error that comes from response data. That's why when there is error, we're gonna pass this string, which comes from response data, and from the screen, we will be able to get it and show it to the user. And we can start to generate our constructor. Actually, I would like to use named parameters. That's why I will wrap this inside of curl braces. I should use required before each property. Also, let me use it from here, but I don't wanna use this error as a required property. Because for example, if state is loading, I don't want to get the error because I know that there is no error when state is loading. I only need this error if there is an error. That's why I will make this property nullable, which means it can be null. In this case, we don't need to use required for this error. As I told you, we will use just the one state for this qubit. But how can we emit different states when we have just the one state inside of login state.dart file. That's possible if we use copy with method. So we can create a method which is going to return login state. And we will name it like this, copy with. Inside of this method, we can get the parameters. So is loading, we're gonna need has error. Then we're gonna need has data. And lastly, we're gonna need error. Then we can return the login state and inside of it, we can pass the data that we are getting from these. As a data, we can use has data. As a has error, we can use the has error. Is loading is going to be is loading. And lastly, 
we can pass error, which is going to be error. So this method is ready, which means when we want to change these values, basically when we want to change the state, we can use copy with method to change the login state. Let's go inside of login qubit. And as an initial value, we can use the login state. We need to pass required parameters, which is has data. So as an initial, we are not going to get data. That's why I'm using false. And also we are not going to have errors and the state is not going to be loading because that is the initial state. Here we have useless import. If I delete it now, we don't have any issue. Now we can create a method which is going to be called when elevated button is clicked, which means when user enter the credentials and clicks to elevated button, automatically method which is inside of the login qubit should be called. So what is going to happen if user clicks to this login button? As a logic here, we can emit a state because when user clicks to this button, as a first step, I would like to emit a loading state. And as I told you, we have just one state, which means we don't have loading state or we don't have error state, but we have copy with method. And we can use it right over here and we can say state dot copy with. That's possible because we defined this method. And what we are doing here, we are changing the state that we passed inside of this login qubit as an initial state. And in this part, we're gonna copy this state as a loading state. And in this part, we're gonna make this state loading state by using these values. So is loading, for example, that is going to be true. And the has error is going to be false because it is loading still. We don't know if there is error or if there is data. That's why also has data is going to be false. And the error, we don't have any error. That's why we can use null value. So we can say null. Then after this state is done, we have to call a method which comes from this login data source. So we can create the instance of this class inside of the qubit. Before this method, we can say login data source. So login data source equals to login data source. We're going to need to import it from this file. And now we can use the method which is inside of it. We can say login data source dot login. So as a value for email and password, what we should use. Currently, we don't have any email or password, which means we are not able to get the values that we are typing inside of these inputs right now. We can create the controllers and then we can pass them inside of each text form field. So here I will create text editing controller and now that is ready to pass it as a controller to this form field. Similarly, we can create password controller. We will be passing these controllers to these form fields. Then when user types something, automatically we will know it by using these controllers. I'm gonna use email controller.txt inside of this login data source.login method. And as a password, I will be using password controller.txt. So this login method is future method, which means we have to await for it. That's very important because if we don't use await, this loading state will be ended very quickly. That's why we have to wait until we log in successfully. If we didn't log in, what should happen? We have to emit error state. So that's why I will take this line and I will use it inside of try catch blocks. Inside of try, I will just try logging to my application. And if I have error, I will catch it, then I will emit the error state. So if I don't have error, which means 
if I can come to this line, that means we are successfully logged in. And we have to let the user know by emitting a new state. And we can just copy this state right over here. And as a loading, we can say false because that is successful. As an error, we can also say error because that is the error state. And the data, we can say true because if we successfully logged in, that means we can get the token that comes from the response body. And as an error, as you remember, that error is nullable, which means we can pass null for it. So if the state is successful, we don't need to pass any error. That's why I will put null here. If we are getting any error, what we can do, we can emit the error state by using emit state dot copy with and is loading is going to be false. We are going to have error. So that means that should be true. And data, if we didn't log in successfully, that means we don't have any token. And the error now, which means we can pass this error, but from where are we gonna pass it? We can use this E, which comes from this login method. So if you remember for this login method, if we didn't get status code as 200, we are throwing exceptions because if the status code is not 200, which means we have error. And we are using response data error as error message, which is very useful. So that means this E is going to be the error that is inside of response body. And we can use it here just like this, e.toString.